Hello everyone, my name is Harsh Vijlani and this project is done for my class CSE 637 Computer Vision. Uh, my project's topic is Basketball Shot Detection and Automated Highlight Generation. So basically, Computer Vision is uh, doing some groundbreaking work in the field uh, in the field of sports. So as you as you can see, there are various streaming platforms where you can uh, see the data analytics going on you can see the trajectory of the ball you can see the velocity of the ball the distance that it took the trajectory that it took and things like that and uh, it helps various teams as well as various players to improve their game and see where they are going wrong and things like that apart from doing these works there are also various things that we can do so that we can automate the stuff that are done by humans right now so uh, that basically saves your revenue as well as saves your time. And if it is done by a computer, then that's great. So this project is exclusive to basketball and it tries to detect if a shot is made or not. If a shot is made, then it tries to uh, generate highlights based on that shot. So. The, pro the formal problem statement for this project is given a video from a basketball game and positions for the basket. Uh, please note the position for the baskets or the positions for the hoops are basically the upper left and bottom right coordinates uh, of the hoops. So we have two hoops in, a in each court. So you have to supply those position, the coordinate values where the hoops are located uh, to the program before doing anything else. So given a video from basketball game and positions of the hoops or baskets, the aim is to detect whenever a shot is attempted. If a shot is attempted, then classify that shot as successful or unsuccessful hit or miss and then capture highlight. So let's say that your shot was uh, successful at frame F, then you are going to capture the frames F minus Y to frames F plus Y and create a video out of it. So the, this will be known as the highlight. So f min, uh, from f minus y to f plus y, we are going to collect the subsequent frames and then add, add them to generate the highlight video. <coughs> so there are some methodologies which I tried. Uh, I have gone in great depth and detail for these methodologies for our, uh, uh, for our upcoming slides, but I'm just going uh, to go through it real quick. So the first methodology is that we threshold the region. Please note region here is the, ma uh, the mask of hoops. So basically region is a hoop or a board. We are going to threshold those. Then we are going to compute the change in the number of white pixels per area uh, between two frames. Now these two frames are basically not the subsequent frames, but the process frames. So I have done this at five FPS. So I am computing the change in number of white pixels per area between F minus five and F frame. And if it goes beyond some certain threshold, then we say, okay, a shot is made or an attempt is made. The second methodology <coughs> is almost similar to the first one. Uh, just that we don't threshold it, instead we use background subtraction. And, <coughs> sorry, the third methodology is background subtraction plus use of change in number of white pixels per area, which is similar to the method two, but we also add a machine learning model, a SVM model, which classifies the short as successful or unsuccessful. So let's let's see what method one is doing so for method one we are given hoops given hoops means the location of the hoops uh, upper left and bottom right coordinate and then we generate masks for ports after that we threshold those masks with a constant threshold of 200 so whichever pixel intensity value is greater than 200 would be uh, given 255 which is white and whichever has lower than 200 will be given zero, which is black. <coughs> and we are going to generate thresholded mask for both hoops and boards. The next point is that for every fifth frame, as I have 
told before that we are doing this at 5 5 fps so every fifth frame would be processed so for every fifth frame we are going to calculate the change in number of white pixels per area with respect to the previous process frames this is like f minus 5 and f so the frame f and the frame f minus 5 we are going to compute the uh, change in number of white pixel per area and then if that change if that percentage change is greater than some threshold so i have a threshold of five percent for an attempt and ten percent for short let me first differentiate between what an attempt and what a short is so if somebody uh, throws the ball uh, towards the hoop and <coughs> it is first detected on the board region board is the region which is uh, above the hoop so if a ball is detected near the uh, board then we say okay this is an attempt now a shot is possible without going till board the shot is not possible so if that happens then we say okay attempt is made if that doesn't happen then we don't even see if a shot is made or not because it, that's not possible so <coughs> the shot is the ball passing through the hoop or uh, if there is anything any movement uh, inside the hoop then uh, that's a shot for our method one so if our percentage change is greater than the threshold then we classify them as attempt or shot as i said before first an attempt need to be made then only we will see about the shot so now let's look at some pros and cons of method one so the pros of method one is that it is simple and easy to implement you are just doing thresholding and then some calculation on the percentage change and then comparing with the thresholds and uh, which is easy to implement obviously <coughs> next thing is less resources are needed we don't need uh, much of our processors uh, for this because we don't need much of processing power the next point is low runtime as we are doing as we are just doing the thresholding we don't need uh, it will not take much time so it has low runtime but the cons are immense we have high false positive rate because uh, in various situations the nets inside the hoop might move uh, there might be air or there might be something which tend them to move and if they move then it will be detected as a uh, shot or something like that so uh, that that incurs some false positives in our uh, uh, as results so which is not good and there are many other conditions which uh, gives us false positives it is also highly sensitive to noise so if there are some noise uh, elements inside our mask then they can also say okay a shot is made which wouldn't be so that will also increase the false positives and the third thing is that it is difficult to generalize because every condition is different every code is different so you can't just go with a 5% or 10% uh, change in percent threshold because things might go wrong so it is very difficult to generalize and it has a low accuracy so to overcome method 1 we are going to our method 2 so what's what's going on in method 2 the first step is same we get the coordinates of the hoop which ended mass for board <coughs> but instead of you doing thresholding we do background subtraction so let me just give you some uh, hint on how background subtraction works or what it is so background subtraction is basically it uh, takes the value of each pixel in our uh, image as uh, into consideration apply some statistical methods on it and try to find uh, what is background and what is foreground so if something is static or almost static inside an image then it will it is considered as a background and the moving things are considered as a foreground so that's how uh, that's what the background subtraction is so OpenCV provides two methods for doing background subtraction uh, KNN and MOG2 uh, I tried both of them but MOG2 was uh, more sensitive to noise and we don't need that in our case we just need uh, we just need the noise to be kept minimum as minimum as possible so i use knn now the next thing is for every fifth frame which is our processing rate 
we are applying background subtractor to both hoop and hoops and boards and then we generate background subtracted mass after we get a background subtracted mass we calculate the change in number of white pixel per area with respect to previous process frames and then we check the percentage now here we uh, we are doing background subtraction so the hoops or nets below the hoops or different conditions won't matter as they will be static they will be considered as a background and we have given a black color and only a moving object would have white color so uh, only the ball would be white and uh, players might also be white but we are applying mask on hoops so player won't reach that level and if they reach then ball will also uh, be with them so <coughs> So this approach tries to overcome the drawbacks of method one, and then we do the same as we do in method one. So the pros for method two are is it reduces false positive rates because now even if the wind is going on, the nets are moving, or anything is going on, then uh, they'll be stable as stable as possible. We will getting our masks. So we'll have low false positive rates. It increases accuracy, obviously, and <coughs> it also increases uh, generalization. So, uh, as I said, different conditions won't matter. It will work for all of them. The cons are that the runtime would be high as we are using background subtraction. Background subtraction needs uh, background subtraction takes more time. Uh, we'll need more processing resources, so our resource overhead would increase. There are still some false positive cases in this case when we are unable to differentiate whether a ball is passing over the hoop or ball is passing through the hoop so if it is passing over the hoop it is also uh, detecting it as a shot but it is not a shot it is a false shot so uh, it, this this is the only drawback in our method 2 in a, in the method of method 2 so i'm just going to uh, give you a hint of how the mask looks for both of those methods so for our method one we have uh, we are doing thresholding for our method one and for method two we are doing background subtraction we can see these both are applied on, <coughs> on the same hoop but you can see that there's hoop visible in our thread image and also some noise around it <coughs> sorry but for a background subtracted image we don't have a hoop we don't see a hoop because it is a static it is static and uh, it is considered as a background so we don't see that we just see some noise elements around it but it is good for good for our method here now method three so the main drawback of our method two was that it was unable to distinguish whether a ball is going over the hoop or the ball is going through the hoop in our method three we do everything uh, same as in method two, except we uses a machine learning model to differentiate between a true shot and a false shot. So I used my method two to generate a data set for me, which uh, which tells whether a shot is being taken or not. So it gave me some uh, pictures of some shots being taken or which are detected by my method two. Then I cleaned that shots into false shot and true shot and then trained a machine learning model, trained an SVM model on those data set. So those masks were passed to SVM. So what will happen in method three is first it will see whether there is a change, percentage change in number of white pixel per area, which is greater than or equal to a particular threshold. If it is, then we pass that mask to our SVM model to predict whether it is a true shot or a false shot. As I said, data preparation was done using method two, generated uh, the data set using it. So whatever mask I got, I cleaned that up. I didn't uh, have a ton of time or ton of resources to do this because uh, the number of videos which are freely available were really less. And uh, this uh, obviously need to be enhanced. The cleaning need to be done more extensively and uh, on more videos. So. Yeah, currently I've done it on the data which I have is from three videos, but I plan to increase it afterwards uh, for, for my future work. So these are some examples of data files, uh, just so you, you get an idea of what is going on. So you can see a true shot here. 
this <coughs> this two shot you can see a ball passing through the hoop so the hoop also <coughs> the hoop also changes its position so that is detected as white here so we know that okay ball is passing through the hoop so this is a true shot this is a false shot this was detected as a shot uh, this was some noisy elements and was detected as a fall uh, as a shot but i have classified as false shot because there's no ball moving around that this is that interesting case of false shot where the ball passes over the hoop instead of passing through the hoop as you can see someone threw the ball uh, and this ball is not uh, near that hoop but it appears to be near hoop but it is not uh, it's near with the <coughs> near the camera so this is passing over it and we have another false shot where the camera moved so if the camera moves or there is some glitches in the stream then that that was also detected as shot in our method 2 but i have classified it as false shot to train my svm model so these are the data set which i uh, these are some of the files from my data set which i used to train my svm model so model training and evaluation svm model was trained on the data on the generated data set Uh, the kernel which i used was radial basis function with random state as 42 <coughs> trained test split ratio was 80 to 20 and model evaluation was done using five fold cross validation these were the results these were the result for uh, each fold the accuracy results this is the final matrix for my final model with accuracy of 89.42% and this this is the confusion matrix for the same <coughs> so method pros and cons of method 3 method 3 is the best method out of all the three and it has the highest accuracy it has the lowest false positive rates the only cons are uh, the it takes more time to process as it involves background subtraction as well as it involves uh, svm model prediction so it takes more time than the other two and also needs more processing resources as we know there is a trade off between the performance and the time so if you want to achieve high accuracy then it will take some more time so the same trade off working here so the process flow uh, you give the hoops location as input you generate mask for hoops and boards you create a background subtractor you apply background subtractor on those masks you get background subtracted masks you compute the change in number of white pixels per area uh, between uh, subsequent process frames you calculate <coughs> you check whether that change is greater than or equal to the threshold if you no know, then you continue the process for your next process frame if yes then you pass the mask to svm model svm model output if it is minus 1 then it's a miss if it's 1 then it's a short So if it's a minus one, you continue for your next frame. If it has one, then you generate and write highlights. So, how does the highlight generation works? So highlight generation process basically let's assume that a shot is detected at a frame f. Then <coughs> I'm sorry. Highlight can be defined as collection of subsequent frames for from f minus y to f plus y. Now we need to compute this y. we have the f we have the frame number of the detected shot we just need to calculate the y so i assume that a highlight would be lasting for 5 seconds someone would have shot the ball and if it is a hit then uh, it would take 5 seconds before that frame and after that frame to be called it as a highlight so that was my assumption and as the video is at 30 fps y can be computed to be 75 as 2.5 before 2.5 after so 2.5 into 30 is 75 so a highlight clip would last from f minus 75 frame to f plus 75 frame here it will go from for each subsequent frame and i wrote the highlight video at 10 fps so as to give that slow motion dramatic effect to the shot so ultimately each highlight clip becomes a 15 seconds video in which the shot would be the shot would appear exactly at the middle uh let me just show you some of the highlights which i 
uh, call from applying it on some uh, video. So here you can see these are all the highlights which I got from my code. Here you can see it's a short mid and the timestamp of the short would be near 7.5 7.5 seconds exactly in the middle this so this is a this is one of the highlight clips which was generated we can see some more we can see let's say this one another beautiful shot got in our uh, highlights and then we can see any of those you can see this one so basically the numbers that you are seeing here are the num the f the f value the frame where the shot were the shot appeared so the, the, these highlights were generated for those shots. So let's uh, continue our So the last thing to do is our future work. Uh, so the machine learning model needs, needs to be improved as the data which I got was from only from three videos. So now we can train it on some more videos and we can do the data cleaning stuff more accurately. And also another thing to do is hyperparameter tuning, which was not done for, for now, but it will be done extensively afterwards. Uh, another idea which I have right now is using image gradient. So applying image gradient on the ball would tell us the duration of the ball so we can uh, use those dynamics to improve our current model. Highlight generation uh, can be improved. Right now I'm doing half code. Uh, wherever I'm, I'm directing the basket is, uh, wherever I'm directing short is happening, I'm cutting off the half code portion out of it and then I'm uh, playing it in slow motion. But we can use density, population density and uh, cut through that part and then zoom in and zoom out to give more dramatic effect effect in it. Another thing is using RCNN to detect hoops instead of giving coordinates manually that will make the life much easier. So this is the future working conclusion for my project. Uh, thank you for listening, listening and uh, watching my uh, presentation. Uh, please enjoy some of the demo videos which I embed after this uh, video. Thank you and have a nice day.